This lecture will examine the Southwest Asia and North Africa region through its environment and physical geography, population and settlement patterns, cultural diversity and cohesion, geopolitical framework, and economic and social development. More specifically, we will describe how the region's fragile, often arid setting shapes the region's contemporary environmental challenges. Two, explain how latitude and topography produce the region's distinctive patterns of climate. Three, describe four distinctive ways in which people have learned to adapt their agricultural practices to the region's arid environment. Four, summarize the major forces shaping recent migration patterns within the region. Five, list the major characteristics of Islam and its key patterns of diffusion. Six, identify the region's dominant religions and language families. Seven, describe the local impacts of the Arab Spring rebellions in different regional settings. 8. Identify the role of cultural variables and sectarian differences in understanding key regional conflicts in Israel, Syria, and Iraq. 9. Summarize the geography of oil and gas reserves in the region. And 10. Finally describe traditional roles of Islamic women and provide examples of recent changes. Now that we have looked at the continent of Africa south of the Sahara, we will finish with the seven countries north as well as southwest Asia also called the Middle East. This region spans from the Atlantic Ocean in the west to the Caspian Sea in the northeast to the Indian Ocean in the south. Climate, culture, and oil reserves serve as binding elements for this region. This region is highly symbolic which holds special religious significance for three major religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Culturally, Diverse languages, religions, and ethnic identities have molded land and life within this region for centuries, where Jewish, Christian, and Islamic peoples have yet to resolve long-standing cultural tensions and political differences. The Arab Spring, relatively new fundamental movements through extreme measures, have emerged that have called for fundamental government and economic reforms. The photo depicts a demonstration at a mass rally in November 2011 in Cairo's Tarara Square. This region has long been considered a key cultural hearth with cultural innovations that have diffused to other parts of the world. It has been an early center for agriculture where the domestication of wheat and cattle had begun. Several great civilizations and three major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, developed. This region has been a key human crossroads for thousands of years. Important trade routes have connected North Africa with the Mediterranean and Sub-Saharan Africa. This region is home to the largest oil producing industry in the world, which developed in the 20th century. Many key members of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, are found here and therefore the world demand for oil has created great wealth for many of this region's countries. The pressure to modernize due to the region's strategic importance has made it extremely vulnerable to outside influences, which has caused an increase in Islamic fundamentalism. This movement challenges the encroachment of global popular culture and blames colonial, imperial, and western elements for many of the re region's political, economic, and social problems. Twenty-one countries make up this region from two continents, Africa and Asia. This region includes the African countries of Western Sahara, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, and Sudan. From Asia are Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Bahrain, Kuwait, Iraq, Iran, Jordan, Israel, Lebanon, Syria, and Turkey. Unlike the most popular belief that this region is full of desert, hot, and dry, with its scattered oasis, the physical setting of this region is actually quite complex. The regional terrain varies greatly, with rocky plateaus and mountain ranges more commonly than sandy deserts. This diversity includes several unique features. First, the Meg Maghreb region extends across the northern parts of Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia, and is dominated near the Mediterranean coastline by the Atlas Mountains, shown in the top left photo. Second, the interior North Africa varies between rocky plateaus and extensive lowlands. In northeast Africa, the Nile River dominates the scene as it flows north through Sudan and Egypt. Third, Southwest Asia contains a mixture of mountains, plateaus, deserts, and lowlands. 
The photo at the bottom left shows the Jordan Valley. This panoramic view shows a fertile mix of irrigated tree, vine, and grain crops. The photo on the right is a satellite view of Turkey. This image suggests the varied, quake-prone terrain encountered across the Anatolian Plateau. The Black Sea coastline is visible near the top of the image, and the island-studded Aegean Sea borders Turkey to the west. Socotra is an island in this region located about 230 miles south of Yemen in the Indian Ocean, but very little is heard globally about this unique piece of land. Separated for millions of years from the mainland of the Arabian Peninsula, Socotra's environment involved in isolation. Because of this isolation, Socotra holds about 850 unique plants, 30% of which are found nowhere else on Earth, including the dragon's blood tree shown in the top right photo. Equally rare are the coral reefs and unusual fish population that surround the island in this wet, dry tropics, often referred to as the Galapagos of the Indian Ocean, as shown in the bottom photos. Unfortunately, there have been many ecological threats to this island, including the increased harvesting of plants for pharmaceutical companies, the removal of animals by visitors, offshore drilling, disrupting the coral reefs and aquatic life, and luxury development for tourist trade. Although this region is often termed the dry world, a closer look reveals a more complex climatic pattern. Both latitude and altitude come into play. The map shows the climate patterns of Southwest Asia and North Africa. Dry climates dominate from western Morocco to eastern Iran. Within these zones, persistent subtropical high-pressure systems offer only limited opportunities for precipitation. Elsewhere, mild mid-latitude climates with wet winters are found near the Mediterranean Basin and Black Sea. More specifically, Saudi Arabia experiences dry climates, both tropical and subtropical desert, with temperatures constant throughout the year and very low precipitation. The highland of Yemen experiences dry, tropical, and subtropical steppe, with temperatures consistent and sufficient precipitation to support steppe vegetation whereas the Atlas Mountains and the nearby lowlands of northern Morocco, Al Algeria, and Tunisia experience a distinctly, ex distinctly Mediterranean climate in which hot, dry summers alternate with cooler, relatively wet winters. The map shows the environmental issues in the region. Growing populations, pressures for economic development, and arid conditions combine to create environmental hazards across the region. Long human occupancy has contributed to this fragile environment. This region experiences deforestation and overgrazing, desertification, and salinization. The most vulnerable areas for deforestation is the more humid lands that ring the Mediterranean, which once supported heavy forests including a huge supply of cedar trees, but now have been reduced to a few scattered groves. Most of the forested areas are now grass and scrub due to agricultural practices and grazing, particularly by goats. Just like the Shehel in Sub-Saharan Africa, this region experiences desertification around the desert areas as shown in the map. Somewhat unique to this region and its biggest issue is salinization, which is the buildup of toxic salt in the soil where desert lands are subjected to extensive irrigation. Hundreds of thousands of acres of once fertile farmland within the region have been destroyed or degraded by salinization, particularly acute in Iraq along the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Managing water resources have been a continuous challenge for this region, one of the driest portions on Earth. Many schemes have been used or are being used to accept this most precious resource. In Iran, people use quanat systems for accessing groundwater through the sandy soil. A quanat is an ancient system of water supply that uses shafts and tunnel technology to tap underground water. The photos show how the quanat system looks and is designed. One of the largest water schemes in the region in the past half century was Egypt's Aswan High Dam completed in 1970 on the Nile River south of Cairo. Many benefits came with this dam including greatly increasing storage capacity in the upstream reservoir which promoted more year-round farming and an expansion of cultivated lands along the Nile. 
It also generates large amounts of clean electricity for the region. On the flip side, the dam comes with a high environmental cost with the increase of salinization and accumulation of sediment that used to wash downstream now sits behind the dam, parasitic diseases in marine life, and a collapse of the Mediterranean fishing industry near the Nile Delta. Another engineering project is the Israeli Peace Corridor designed to stimulate regional economy, increase cooperation among Jordanians, Palestinians, and Israelis, and to bring the Red Sea water to the Dead Sea. <clears throat> Lastly, fossil water or water supplies stored underground during earlier and wetter climate periods have also been put to use by modern technology. Fossil water is utilized specifically in Libya's Great Man-Made River Scheme, which taps underground water in the southern part of the country and transports it to northern coastal zones to irrigate drier agricultural land. Saudi Arabia has also developed deep water wells, allowing it to expand its food output greatly. Hydropolitics is a dramatic and serious issue that can affect this region in devastating ways. Hydropolitics is the interplay of water resource issues and politics, which has raised tensions between countries that share drainage basins. Whenever a country begins to dam a river that crosses multiple boundaries, it greatly affects the water resources that run downstream, and therefore affects the water supply in those countries. There have been several of these dam projects built that affect this region. One is the Tikizi Dam project on the Nile built in Ethiopia. This project threatens to disrupt downstream fisheries and irrigation in North Africa. Another is Sudan's Miro Dam on another stretch of the Nile and has raged, raised major concerns in Egypt. A third project in Turkey on the upper Tigris and Euphrates rivers has raised issues with Iraq and Syria, who argue that capturing their water might be considered a provocative political act. Lastly, the Jordan River system, as shown in the map, has been a particular focus of conflict in recent times. Israeli, Israelis worry that about Palestinian and Syrian pollution. Nearly every Jordani, Jordanians argue for more water from Syria, and all regional residents must deal with the uncomfortability, uncomfortable reality that, regardless of their political differences, they must drink from the same limited supply of fresh water. The photo on the left is a desalinization plant in Israel. This facility, located south of Tel Aviv, produces about 13% of Israel's domestic fresh water and is one of the largest desalinization plants in the world. The satellite image on the right is of the Straits of Hormuz. The entrance to the Persian Gulf is one of the region's most important choke points, vulnerable to military blockades or disruption. Video question number one. Please pause the video and answer the following. Explain why water is a political issue in this region. In your own words, use the text as a guide, be thorough and specific, and include climate and environmental factors in your answer. Projected climate changes will aggravate already existing environmental issues within this region. Higher temperatures will have the following effects. Higher overall evaporation rates, lower overall soil mo moisture, stress on crops, grasslands and vegetation, reduction in crop yields such as wheat and corn, reduction in net runoff, and hydroelectric potential for urban areas, an increase in extreme weather related events, an increase in heat related deaths, increase in sea level, increase in political conflict due to a decrease in water resources, and less developed areas will have a harder time adapting to the change. The photo shows the beachside view along northern Egypt's low-lying coastline at Alexandria, which could change significantly if global sea levels were to rise. The map shows the population density of about 500 million people in the region. The striking contrasts are clearly evident between large, sparsely occupied desert zones and much more densely settled regions where water is available. The Nile River and the Maghreb region contains most of North Africa's people, whereas Southwest Asian populations cluster in the highlands and along the better watered shores of the Mediterranean. 
Some population points to note are that the physiological density, which is the number of people per unit of arable land in this region, is one of the highest in the world. Another is a pattern of urban geography, which is highly uneven. Less than two-thirds of the overall population is urban, but many nations are overwhelmingly dominated by huge and sprawling cities. And rates of urban growth have been extremely high. Cairo, Egypt has more than quadrupled in the last 50 years. There are no questions to answer here, but please pause the video and study the population indicators contained in the chart. Some of the anomalies to note are the population density of Bahrain as compared to that of Western Sahara, the total fertility rate of Sudan compared to that of Lebanon, Qatar and Bahrain are 100% urban, while Yemen is only 29%, most of the region is young with a low percentage over 65, and the extreme difference in net migration rate between Bahrain and Qatar. This region is home to one of the world's earliest hearths of domestication, where plants and animals were purposefully selected and bred for their desired, desirable characteristics. This early domestication was focused on the Fertile Crescent, an ecological diverse zone that stretches from the Levant or Eastern Mediterranean region in Turkey inland through the fertile hill country of northern Syria. Most common in the drier portions of the region, pastoral nomadism is practiced, which is the traditional, traditional form of subsistent agriculture. Pastoral nomads engage in transhumance, which is the seasonal movement of livestock between wet and dry seasons for a large part of their livelihood. Good examples of pastoral nomadism are the North African Berbers, Arabian Bedouins, and Ira Iranian Bakhtiaris. Permanent oasis settlements dot the arid landscape where high groundwater levels or modern deep well water wells provide reliable moisture in otherwise arid locales. These communities are often walled, filled with mud houses, and sit adjacent to intensely utilized fields where underground water is carefully applied to tree and cereal crops as shown in the photo. Date palms and irrigated fields shape the landscape around the Tinahir, a fertile oasis settlement located in central Morocco. Rural settlement has also occurred along exotic rivers. For centuries, the region's densest rural settlement has been tied to its great river valley and their seasonal floods of water and enriching nutrients. In such settings, exotic rivers transport precious water and nutrients from distant, more humid lands into drier regions, where the source resource is used for irrigated farming. Some of the most efficient farms in the region are associated with Israeli kibbutzism, which is which are collectively worked settlements producing grain, vegetable, and orchard crops irrigated by waters from the Jordan River and from the country's elaborate feeder canals. Lastly, Mediterranean climates in portions of the region permit varied forms of dryland agriculture that depend largely on seasonal moisture to support farming. These zones include the valleys and coastal lowlands of the northern Maghreb shores of the Mediterranean and upland air uplands across the Anatolian and Iranian plateaus. The map shows the agricultural areas in the region. As you can see, pastoral nomadism is more widely practiced than any other agricultural systems. Can you see how important the Nile River is to this region, especially in Egypt and Sudan? The photo on the left depicts farmers in the Nile River Valley pulling clover for animal feed from these irrigated fields along the Nile River north of Cairo, Egypt. The photo on the right depicts a cannabis field in Morocco. Bundles of processed hash dry in the sun near Kitama, Morocco, and cannabis fields clothe the nearby hillside. Much of the region's hashish crop is bound for Europe. Some of the world's oldest cities are located in this region that have traditionally played important functional roles as centers of political and religious authority, as well as key focal points of local and long-distance trade. Some key points to note of these ancient cities are that they are surrounded by walls for protection from outside invasion, contain temples, palaces, tombs, and public buildings. 
Newer cities emerged along ports on the shores of the Mediterranean and at the junction points of important caravan routes. Islam infused much of its ideals and beliefs in many of the cities in this region. Attributes of these Islamic cities include a medina or walled urban core dominated by a central mosque, nearby bazaar, a maze of narrow streets, and houses with small windows and private courtyards. This photo at the top depicts the Hazarati Mazum Mosque in Qom, Iran. This shrine is visited annually by thousands of faithful Shiites in this sacred Iranian city south of Tehran. The photo at the bottom is a map of the walled city of Fez, Morocco. The tiny neighborhoods and twisting lanes reveal features of traditional Islamic urban centers. To the west, however, the rectangular street patterns, open spaces, and broad avenues suggest colonial European influences. Since the 1950s, fundamental changes have occurred in the cities of this region. They have become key gateways to the global economy from new investments, industrialization, and tourism. The urban landscape has expanded with airports, commercial and financial districts, industrial parks, and luxury hotels. The urban centers have also become the focal points of economic growth, drawing rural population for economic opportunities. Some cities have done, ex done extremely well, like the city of Manan Manama, Bahrain, in the Persian Gulf. In this aerial view of the city, Manama's changing skyline is marked by high-rise projects of modern and futuristic architecture. Dubai is an example of the region's urban contrasts. The soaring tower of downtown Dubai's Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest structure, contrasts dramatically with the scene in a nearby labor camp in the Sharara city where South Asian workers enjoy a card game during their time off from work. A large majority of the country's population is foreign-born, and many immigrants like these work in the construction sector of the economy, building structures such as the Braj Khalifa. The map shows the sources of immigrant populations working in the Persian Gulf states region in the early 21st century. Note the importance of nearby Arab countries other Muslim nations, and South Asia. This region experiences many migration patterns to include rural to urban, economic opportunities within the region, economic op opportunities outside the region, and political strife with refugees. These population pyramids are of Egypt, Iran, and United Arab Emirates for 2012. Three distinctive demographic snapshots highlight regional diversity. A. Egypt's above-average growth rates differ sharply from those of B. Iran, where a focused campaign on family planning has reduced recent family sizes. Male migrant laborers play a special role in skewing the pattern within C, the United Arab Emirates. Video question number two. Please pause the video and answer the following. Describe how the location of the region impacts the rural settlement patterns that have developed including agricultural practices. In your own words, using the text as a guide, be thorough and specific in your answer. This region contains the Semitic hearth where three monotheistic religions emerged, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Although the first two are not the dominant religions, their roots run deep and continue to have a strong hold on one of the most important religious cities in the world, Jerusalem. Islam emerged further south in the area of Mecca and Medina in Saudi Arabia. Even though the Muslims believe the Hebrew Bible and the Christian New Testament is accurate, they devote most of their time studying the Quran, which represents God's highest religious and moral revelations to humankind. Islam is also a more conservative religion than Christianity in many respects. For example, it is less ornate. Furthermore, the creed of Islam rests on five essential pillars. 1. Repeating the basic creed, there is no God but God, and Muhammad is his prophet. 2. Praying, facing Mecca five times daily. 3. Giving charitable contributions. 4. Fasting between sunup and sundown during the month of Ramadan. and 5. Making at least one religious pilgrimage or hajj to Muhammad's birthplace of Mecca, as shown in the photo. 
Many Islamic fundamentalists still argue for a theocratic state, such as a modern-day Iran in which religious leaders guide public policy. Shortly after Muhammad died in 1630, in, I'm sorry, in 632, Islam was divided into two factions over the succession of religious power. One group, now called the Shiites, favored passing on power within Muhammad's own family, especially to Allah, his son-in-law. Most Muslims, later known as Sunnis, advocated passing power down through the established clergy and emerged victoriously. This branch has formed the mainstream Islam today. The photo shows thousands of faithful Muslims gathered, gathered at the Grand Mosque in central Mecca, part of the pilgrimage to the sacred site place that draws several million visitors annually. This map shows the diffusion of Islam. The rapid expansion of Islam that followed its birth is shown in the map. From Spain to Southeast Asia, Islam's legacy remains strongest nearest its Southwest Asian hearth. In some settings, its influence has ebbed or has come into conflict with other religions, such as Christianity, Judaism, and Hinduism. This region is home to many non-Islamic communities as well. This is best known in the old city of Jerusalem, where well-established neighborhoods reflect these historical and cultural differences. The map shows Old Jerusalem, which is a sacred site for Jews, Christians, and Muslims. The Western Wall, a remnant of the ancient, ancient Jewish temple, stands at the base of the Dome of the Rock in Islam's al aqasa Mosque. This map shows the major language families of the region. Arabic is a Sem Semitic, Semitic Alto-Asiatic language, and it dominates the region's cultural geography. Turkish, Persian, and Kurdish, however, remain important exceptions, and such differences within the region often have lasting political consequences. Israel's most recent reintroduction of Hebrew further complicates the region's linguistic geography. A couple cultural aspects of the region stand out. One, Islam is not just concentrated in this region, even though it is where the majority of followers, followers live. Islam is rapidly expanding to other places such as China, European Russia, Central Africa, and Southern Philippines, making it truly a global religion. With the spread of Islam outside the region, Mecca is positioned to become globally significant. Two, much of the oil wealth accumulated by many Islamic nations is used to sustain and promote the religion. Investment in Islamic banks and economic ventures go to finance Islamic cultural causes, colleges, and hospitals worldwide. Three, young affluent people have embraced Western-style music, literature, and clothing, which has threatened fundamental Islam and continues to create East-West tensions and resentments. Four, technology has enabled this region to content contend to the world through the internet, cell phones, and various forms of social media. In the photo, a young Egyptian woman talks on a mobile phone in Cairo's Tarar Square during demonstrations in February 2011. 5. Television viewing offers everything from Islamic religious programming to American-style reality TV. In Iran, satellite dishes are banned, but many have access to them. 6. A new trend among young women, particularly in, on campuses, is to wear Western-style baggy trousers and short haircuts, although their deviant behavior has been seen as a menace to society. And 7. The role of sports, particularly soccer, plays an important role in everyday life in the region. Soccer is enjoyed by many, young and old, and is the national pastime of most countries. In conclusion, much of these cultural changes have gone against traditional religious values and has caused much tension between this religion and the Western world. This is very evident with the increasing global terrorism groups emerging behind Islam. Video question number three. Please pause the video and answer the following. Explain how Islam has shaped this region culturally. Be thorough and specific In your own words, using the text as a guide, be thorough and specific in your answer. Ongoing geopolitical issues have plagued this region for some time now, as shown in the map. Many countries are members of the Arab League, a regional organization focused on Arab political and economic unity. 
The Arab Spring rebellions and Syria's violent civil war have have shaped recent political changes. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict also remains pivotal. The Arab Spring rebellions, which have begun in 2010, are a series of public protests, strikes, and rebellions against state authority in this region, often facilitated by social media that, call, that called for fundamental government and economic reforms and focused broadly on, one, changes of widespread government corruption, two, limited opportunities for democracy and free elections, three, rapidly rising food prices, four, the enduring reality of widespread poverty and high unemployment, especially for people under 30. European colonization was less involved and later in this region, mainly due to the power of the Ottoman Empire, which dominated the region for much of the earlier time. However, a few major legacies still remain, most notably in the old French capital of Algiers, as shown in the photo. By the 1820, France moved, directly, moved more directly into Algeria, and the landscape of modern Algiers still reflects the colonial connections to France. The other legacy, and most controversial, was the evolution of Israel, as shown in the maps. Conflict began over land acquisition and control in the area of what is now the State of Israel during European involvement in the mid-1900s. In 1917, Britain issued the Balfour Declaration, a pledge to encourage the creation of a Jewish homeland in the region. Over time, an increase in land was given to the Jews that were occupied by the Palestinians, and thusly the Palestinians revolted which ended in war in 1967. Tension between the two factions have remained ever since, especially since Israel continues to increase occupation of land that was sanctioned to the Palestinians. Palestinians continue to get support from the Arab communities and tensions continue to escalate with more terrorist acts as fear and resentments increase. Today Israel continues to occupy more and more land, especially in Gaza, the West Bank, and Golan Heights. The map on the right shows the area called the West Bank. Portions of the West Bank were returned to Arab Palestinian control in the 1990s, but Israel has partially reasserted its authority in some of these areas since 2000, citing the increased violence in the region. The photo on the left shows a Jewish settlement in the West Bank. According to the tensions of the area, Israel has continued to construct security barriers around West Bank settlements, as shown in the photo on the right. Israel sees this as the only way to protect its citizens from suicide bombings and more terrorist attacks. Palestinians see it as a land grab or apartheid wall des designed to socially and economically isolate many of their settlements along the Israeli borders. The maps show the complete the map shows the completed and planned portions of the Israeli security border as well as many of the Israeli settlements located in the West Bank region. Iraq is another multinational state born during the colonial era that was carved out of the British Empire in 1932. Iraq is cultural complex today with a mix of Shiite, Sunnis, and Kurds. The Kurds are a group of people who have had their own ethnic identity and political aspirations. They are con considered a nation without a state. The map shows the Shiites dominating the area south of Baghdad. Sunnis dominate in the western triangle zone and Kurds are most numerous in the north near oil-rich Kirkuk and Mosul. In 2013, growing violence between Shiite and Sunni factions appeared to be heightened by Sufi extremists and by Al-Qaeda terrorists within the country. Complicating matters further, the politically and culturally distinct Kurdish alliance remains dominant in the north. Question number four. Please pause the video and answer the following. How has the evolution of Israel impacted the politics of the region? In your own words, using the text as a guide, be thorough and specific in your answer. This region is comprised of incredible wealth as well as discouraging poverty. Some countries enjoy prosperity due mainly to rich reserves of petroleum and natural gas, but other nations are among the world's least developed. Continuing political instability contributes to the region's struggling economy. There are no questions to answer here, but please pause the video and study the anomalies in the chart. For example, under GNI, look at Qatar versus Sudan and Iraq. 
look at the Human Development Index of Israel and Yemen. The percentage of people living in poverty in Sudan is staggering, as well as its infant mortality rate. Also examine the Gender Equity Index. Many countries are well below that of any other region in the world. Childhood mortality is an important issue that plagues this region. The map shows the wealthier nations, such as Israel and United Arab Emirates, have very low rates of child mortality, but poor countries such as Sudan, Morocco, and Iraq continue to struggle with very high rates. This region plays a central role in the global geography of both crude petroleum production as well as natural gas production. Abundant regional reserves suggest that the pattern will continue. The map at the top shows in green depicts crude petroleum production in 2011. The middle map shown in orange depicts natural gas production for the same year. And the bottom two charts in their perspective colors show the percentage of world reserves for each. The role of women in the largely Islamic region remains a major social issue. Female participation rates in the workforce are among the lowest in the world, and large gaps typically exist between levels of education for males and females. In conservative areas, few women work outside the home and impose legal restrictions on the activities of women. For example, women are not allowed to drive in Saudi Arabia, and wearing a full veil remains mandatory in parts of Iran. On the other hand, many countries have changed their restrictions and accurately actually promote women's movements, especially in governmental roles. The photo depicts Algerian women at Algeria's National Assembly. Women now make up more than 30 percent of Algeria's National Assembly, a higher proportion of female representation than any many Western nations. Women also make up a larger portion of judges and lawyers in Algeria as well. Furthermore, education for women is on the rise like in countries like Sudan and Saudi Arabia. This region shares close economic ties with the rest of the world. Although oil and gas remain critical commodities that dominate international economic linkages, the growth of manufacturing and tourism is also redefining the region's role in the world. OPEC, which stands for Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, highly influences the cost and availability of oil and gas around the globe, and many countries around the world rely on these products from this region. Their mission, according to the organization and in accordance with its statute, is to coordinate and unify the petroleum policies of its member countries and ensure the stabilization of oil markets in order to secure an efficient, economic, and regular supply of petroleum to consumers, a steady income to producers, and a fair return on capital for those investing in the petroleum industry. 90% of Saudi Arabia's exports come from this industry. Therefore, many of these oil producing countries form partnerships with foreign corporations, accelerating the economic integration of the region with the rest of the world. This region could benefit greatly with cooperative initiatives with other regional alliances like the European Union as well as their own. In 2005, 17 Arab League members established the Greater Arab Free Trade Area, GAFTA, designed to eliminate all the interregional trade barriers and spur economic cooperation. Finally, tourism continues to play an important role in the region's economy. Traditional magnets such as ancient historical sites and religious localities draw millions of visitors annually. The Mediterranean Sea, as shown in the photo of Egypt's coast, invites many of the sun-soaked beaches with many outdoor activities such as snorkeling. Question number five. Please pause the video and answer the following. Why would countries like Saudi Arabia promote industrialization in other countries? What would happen to the economy of this region if the United States began producing oil and gas for themselves with their own resources? In your own words, using the text as a guide, be thorough and specific in your answer.